If you like the look of color shift powder paint on your jig heads, but don't want to go through the hassle of making your own by mixing clear with your choice of color shift pigment, hang tight. I got you covered. Yes, indeed. Color shift is awesome. We have been using a lot of it over the last six months or so on the channel where I've taken some clear and I've taken my favorite color shift pigment from the soft plastic world, found the right mix, and the results are pretty spectacular. I can understand though that mixing your own, going through the trouble, not really for everybody. And luckily, Barlow's Tackle has come to the rescue. If you have been watching Dan's channel, if you're not, you should be. I will drop a link to his channel down in the description. Over the last number of weeks, Dan has been doing an awesome job with this new stuff by Barlow's. Uh, it's all these color shift stuff or color shift options for powder painting that they have created. They've done the work of mixing this stuff and come out with a line of eight different powder paints, all color shift, and they're calling them Nova Stones. I am going to just add on to, I'm gonna build on to what Dan has already been doing. I have all eight colors, and what we're gonna do today is we are going to use each one of them, um, six of which will be in a fluid bed, two of which will not be. I thought it would be interesting to actually dip some by hand. Not everybody has a fluid bed. And try to get you guys a good look at what they look like. We're gonna geek out a little bit though. We're gonna get experimental with this. What is it gonna look like if we um, dip each one of these colors, all eight, first in an unpainted jig head? And then we do it again with one that has been based and cured in white. And finally, we try it also with one that has been based and cured in black. So I'm excited about this. I will tell you what the colors are as we go. Let me get the uh, fluid bed here all fired up and we will jump into our first one. I think we're going to do Eclipse. And there she is, just uh, burbling away in the fluid bed. So I'm gonna put the first jig head into my uh, clamps here, into my hemostats, and heat this guy up. As is always the case for me, I'm gonna use a little piece of heat shrink tubing, put it right on the end to protect that hook eye. These hook eyes on these uh, hooks are actually big enough where I could probably get away without it, but I am <clears throat> a creature of habit, so I'm going to continue to do that. I love a nice, clean hook eye. And here we go. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm gonna dip twice. Very nice. Get that heat shrink off of there. Nice clean eye. Oh my. Look at that purple and the blue. Ooh. That is nice. Now let's find out how this compares to the one with a white base. And here we go. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm, three times. So there's what she looks like with a white base. Actually, let me get that heat shrink off of there. You saw I dipped this three times. I think I got a little gun shy on the heat because I didn't know how much I could, uh, how much heat I could add to a cured head without damaging the cure job on it. But it did take. Maybe we'll go just a little bit longer on the heat on the next one, which has that black base. All right, here we go. Definitely on the heat longer this time. Yeah, it took better. Two. Just a little bit more on the top to smooth it out. 
I had a little bit of what looked like dimpling on the top, but a little pop of heat right there and took care of it. Get that heat shrink off of there. Always better to pull that heat shrink tubing off if you use it like I do uh, right after you dip. Otherwise it gets hard and can get a little crusty to get off of there. But that looks good. There you go. No cure. White base. Black base. All of them turned out really, really nice. Now we won't know for sure until we cure it. I will say that. This is a little premature. I'm going to hang these up. Got my little post-it notes. I'm so scientific. Black base, white base, no base. And when I put them on the jig racks and we cure these guys after we do all of them, I'll make sure that I keep track of uh, which one is which. Sticking with the darker colors, or at least what I think will be another darker color, kind of a natural type deal. Let's look at Mossy Craw. This may be Lava Craw Green, which would make sense with the Mossy, Mossy Craw. We shall see. I know I love Lava Craw Green. Just like before, no base coat first. Oh yeah, Lava Craw Green, it appears, or at least based primarily on Lava Craw Green. Although, it's got some blue in there. I don't know guys, this is more than just Lava Craw Green. I'm seeing, I'm seeing blue along the edges, obviously some uh, green, and the, I, I do think the base here is the Lava Craw. I'm impressed. Let's see what it looks like with the white. So that was another three on the white. Looks good though. Cool, let's do black. Very nice. What a nice color, wow. So, much like our um, Eclipse that we started with, I can't really see a discernible difference between no base, uh, white, or black. But again, curing is going to be key, so we will um, withhold our final judgment until we cure these, and then we can take a look. Let's move on. I'm feeling like we should look into some tequila colors. Let's do Sunrise first, Tequila Sunrise, and after that, we'll do Sunset. Interesting, so this one is a little thicker. You can see how it's bubbling there, getting a little bit extra on the edges. It takes a little bit extra um, air to keep it going. As usual, starting out, no base. Wow, look at that. Golly, I hope it's doing it justice on the camera. That is gorgeous. Wow. And there's white base, all finished up, looking just as tasty as the first one. Mm -mm -mm. And voila. Two dips, a little extra heat at the end. Looks awesome. Sunset, oh yeah, more of a, a purple than um, the oranges and the reds that we saw in the other, which makes sense, right? At night, gonna have a little bit more dusky look than in the morning. Boy, that looks nice. Here's the white base, and as has been the case with each of these colors so far, took three dips and a little heat. But it still looks juicy. There's the finished product on the black. Looks like I had an imperfection in my jig head there. Go figure. But the paint looks awesome. 
pretty sure we've done Lava Craw on the channel already, so I uh, thought we'd mix it up here. I'll go ahead and paint these three, show you the results, instead of uh, going into the nitty gritty like we have on previous videos. That is without a base. You can really see the yellows and the oranges with that red. See the red on the side? Oh, it looks even better in person. It really is something. As good or better than my mix, where I just took the, the color shift pigment that we use in soft plastics, which is phenomenal, added Protec Clear to it to get something very close to this. Actually, you know what? Let's just see. There you go. That's a good comparison. Pretty darn close. This one looks like it has, I don't know, just a little bit more depth to it. But maybe that's just my eyes playing tricks on me. But you can see all those color variations in both. Reminds me too, while I'm thinking of it, I'll show you the white one and the black one in a second. Um, Matt Barlow, when he was telling me about these, um, said that they were, they, 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 they use a different clear. So I'm using Protec Clear in my custom um, 4 to 1s, 5 to 1s, 6 to 1, 3 to 1 mixes. For whatever reason, he wanted to make sure, as we were discussing it, that I knew that he, they were using a different kind of clear. I don't know what the clear is, just not Protec. Felt like it mixed better, it uh, coated better, it was just a better um, solution for them. For what it's worth, um, I guess there's a different kind of clear in this, and maybe that's helping to make the difference. Now the white one. So again, nothing really different. And there's black base. Same story. Onward and upward, we've got one more to do in the fluid bed, and then we're gonna do the last to El Manuel by dipping those in. I thought that'd be fun. The last one in the fluid bed is going to be bluegrass. Oh! And this is our first uh, lighter color. So the, uh, the rest have been kind of that heavy red um, purples and blues. This may be the first time that we see something different on the white. Wow, look at that. I can already see a difference. I mean, just in the way that the paint is reacting to the air, this one is thinner. I can just tell. It's thinner, it's smoother, right? We don't have it building up on the edges. Some of those other ones, anytime it's thicker, it's not just these Nova Stones that are darker or any kind of custom. Anytime you have a thicker paint, it's harder to keep it elevated without it kind of getting messy around the edges. Let's paint up our unbase coated version first. All right. <laughs> Wow, that's pretty. Wow, more green than I thought it was going to be, but I definitely see those blues. This is bluegrass, right? So I definitely see those blue hints and those blue highlights. Wow, the flake in this is fantastic. Gold, green, wow. That looks pretty good, but I'm gonna dip it a third time, just for good measure. This one was a little harder to uh, see if I was having, you know, the white show through any stippling or anything. So that's why I dipped it a third time. Could have probably gotten away with just the two. But that looks really nice as well. Two did it on this one with the black. So if it wasn't for that nasty hole in its head, this one would look pretty dang sweet too. Well, we've only got two more left. We're going to put away the fluid bed now uh, because you know what? Like I said earlier, not everybody has a fluid bed and everybody should be able to use these. We are going to heat up these jig heads and just dip them in here as best as I can. I don't do this very often, so hopefully, I can hearken back to the days of old before I knew the, the magic and the joy of a fluid bed that makes even the worst uh, mistakes look okay. As with any paint, 
you got to agitate it. So whether it's in the fluid bed and you use uh, a little stirrer, I just take a, um, a paper clip and bend it out so that it's got a curved edge so I don't go through the filter. And then I use that to kind of agitate and stir it up and get it fluffy. But all the more so, if you're not going to use a fluid bed and you're going to dip directly into these, you want to introduce as much air into this can, into this uh, container as possible so that um, you can get a nice even coat and it doesn't get clumpy. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't get clumpy. Here we go. Wish me luck. In, in, back out. Clumpy. No! Well, this one got a little thick on us. Uh, that was not the paint's fault. Let's just be straight. That, that was my fault. Like one of those, you know, when, when a baby is born and they got a cone head and they got that big lump on the back of their head. <laughs> Maybe the other two will go better. I have totally redeemed myself. Any Dumb and Dumber fans in the room? Check that out. There we go. This is the white. Mm-hmm. Noticeably far, far better. So that one worked out well. And here is the black. To be honest, I'm wondering if I didn't just get that unpainted uh, head too hot. I know I feel more comfortable leaving it on the heat longer because it doesn't have the paint. If you leave it on the, uh, if you, if you do leave, um, the painted ones on the heat too long, they start to sag. So I feel more comfortable doing it with the other. I think I left it on there for at least a couple more seconds. Maybe it was just too much. I don't know. Let's move on to our last color. None other than sun burst. Would you believe me if I told you I did it again? I did it again. Unbelievable. Look at that. Oh gosh. My apologies. If you're going to do this without a base coat, go light on the heat. Man. It'll probably cure up a little bit better. Remember, we use the jig rack, so it's going to sit in the jig rack like this. And as it heats up, it should drop down. Even if it gets all the way down here on the shank, um, you can either cut that off, or if it doesn't bother you, just leave it. There's something about the, the coating. I mean, when that one was a fail, check this one out. This was the white. I mean, that is... If I can get it to focus there we go that is on point smooth beautiful color sunburst i mean we know that's an awesome color i do see a little bit more red in this than what i'm used to in the sunburst that i have which i kind of like i actually dig that get a little bit of that red tint to it and then this one is the black one also looking very nice let me get these in the aforementioned jib, jib <laughs> the, 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 the aforementioned jig racks no paint white base and the black one it is nighttime here now so while these guys cook away for the next 25 minutes when it pops out, I'll let them cool. Tomorrow, I will see you outside. I'm hoping that there's not going to be any rain because I think the best place to really be able to capture what these uh, paints look like is in the sunshine. Not exactly a bright, shiny day that we can take our new jig heads out and show you all the glory and the glamour in the sunshine. I will try to find some decent lighting and go a different route. All right, so real quick, let's go through each and I'm gonna show you all three in the same shot so you can kind of get a sense. I think you're gonna see that for the most part, the darker tones don't really show a huge variance but uh, fun to look at nonetheless and this will give you an idea of what these colors look like after they've been cured no matter how you do it 
right? If you choose to base coat it first or just go straight to the lead. This one is Eclipse. The one on the left is no base. This is white, this is black. So pretty darn similar, but you see that color shift, All right? You see the green and then the purples and the blues. It's a sweet color. Mossy Oak is next. And this one, I can see just the teeniest hint, right? This is the black base and you can tell that it's just got a little bit darker tint to it, but for sure it's a nuance. I mean, you'd really have to be looking for it, but it, there is a slight difference. See those blues coming out, very natural colors, some green. This is another winner. Tequila Sunrise. Beautiful color. Shifty blues and purples. Kind of that, what is that, magenta maybe? Yeah, very nice. Again, just a, I mean, just a tiny bit darker on this guy. But no bleed through on any of these yet. If you could just go straight to the lead and be 100% good to go. Here is Sunset. You can definitely tell with more blues. Kind of a darker purple. Just a little darker in general than the sunrise. See that shift? Ooh, look at that. This one's up there. Eclipse and this one really caught my attention. I like this one a lot. Who doesn't love classic Lava Craw? Look at those reds and yellows, oranges. Oh, man. This is so nice. And now it's easy, right? I mean, the one that I created, uh, mixing the clear and the pigment looks just as good. You get a lot of the same results, but now you can just buy it pre-made. Very sweet color. So now we get into some of the lighter colors. This is bluegrass. This one surprised me. I really expected this one without the base to be bleeding through, especially on some of these sharper edges. It really coated well. Look at that. I don't see too much coming through at all. I think as a safety measure, you could always go with the white and it would help it pop. But the white and the black, not a huge difference, just a little nuance, deeper, darker. But other than that, looking very nice and very user friendly. And here is Sawgrass. Again, looking very nice. This one is the only one, if I look real close, I could kind of see some of the lead poking through. But man, I mean, I got to look really close. And. It looks like maybe just under there, you can see just a little bit of black. You see that? I don't think that's a shadow because no matter where, which way I move it, it's still there. So if I was to do this one and wanted the absolute perfect jig head, I would go the extra step and coat it, coat it in white first and then dip it because that one, I think that one looks best. It's the most consistent here. And lastly, sunburst. Ugh, embarrassing. I don't know what it was here. Um, I mean, you can see that there's actually a thinner layer on the shank, right? Than what you see here and what you see here. Yet, it clumped up on the head. I'm, I can only attribute that to me putting too much heat on the head and the coating, the white and the black, base coat on these just tempered that heat enough that it didn't just blast the the paint as soon as it dipped down in there aside from that um yeah these all worked out well and you can kind of see again just a little nuance a little darker with the back the, the black background well as we wrap this up what are some takeaways from today one, I think it's safe to say that Barlow's new Nova Stone Color Shift Powder Paint is fantastic. I will include the link down in the description, just like I do with every build or anytime we do anything on the channel, I try to leave links down there so you guys can go check it out for yourself. 
if you do any kind of jig painting at all, I highly suggest you take a look at these. You get a two, a whole two ounces. So this stuff is going to last you a good long time. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's not too bad. And I think it's going to be well worth it. On the execution side, I think the biggest takeaway from today, the base coat probably doesn't matter all that much. Maybe that's because the uh, the clear that they're using is not the Protec clear that I was using and it just coats better, kind of acts better with uh, the, the lead only jig head. So hey, that's a bonus. We don't have to go the extra route to um, base coat in white or black unless you're wanting just that little tiny hint, that little nuance of a difference to make it a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. But it was so minor that, at least for my purposes, you guys make your own call. I don't think I'm gonna be basing any of these in white or black. They just perform perfectly right out of the chute. Presuming, of course, that I use my fluid bed. So if you are not a fluid bed user and uh, you're dipping straight into the jar, be mindful and very careful of your temperatures. Do not go down the path that I went down and get a clumpy mess. Go easy on the temperature. You can always add heat afterwards. I think that's gonna wrap it up, guys. I appreciate you coming along on my little geek out experience or experiment today. Hope you enjoyed the content. It was helpful for you. I truly appreciate you watching. And until the next time, I'll see you guys in the shop.